Alrighty. Welcome back guys. So today we're on a mission to go and get lobster, but we've been throwing a couple of curve balls. One, I forgot to pack Mon's clothes. So Mon has zero clothes for this trip, which is awesome. And I yeah, feel incredibly guilty. Um, and the second thing is I forgot my brand new Aimrite wetsuit. So I've got no wetty. So we're diving in the winter down south. It's gonna be cold like 15 degrees and I've got no wetty, so I'm hoping I can brave the conditions, brave the cold, and get in, get myself a couple of crays or three lobster, and then get the hell out. And um, yeah, otherwise we're gonna be relying on Diver Mon for the lobster, and we'll see how we go. Alrighty, we're You're here. You're ready to dive. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to dive. I almost wasn't ready because I didn't screw in my fins, but lucky we just got some string and the, the old DIY get no. up so that was nice <laughs> now you know you're gonna be the breadwinner today you've got oh, the wetsuit so. you're gonna have to do us a solid and <laughs> get them craze yeah well I think it'll be all right come on you've got experience from <laughs> New Zealand craze you're gonna be fine yeah it'll be fine we'll get some craze fingers crossed and some fish just bumped into two blokes who I've actually bumped into previously. I still didn't get their names, so sorry fellas if you're watching. Um, I will next time, I'm sure. But they didn't have much success. One of them managed to get a couple of crays, the other guy didn't, so we'll see how we go. They seem to say that they worked the, the reef, um, which isn't too promising for us, but we're here. We've yeah, managed to get here, so we might as well just get wet and see how we go. I'm gonna be in for 10 minutes. It's going to be freezing, I reckon. at least. 20, she reckons, but we'll see how we go. Um, <laughs> dude, you're going to be in there for hours getting us yeah. lobster. Right. I just want to find the whales. Yeah, and we've seen whales out the front, and I wish I could show you, but this is one of my favourite spots, and I don't want to give it away. Because um, the pressure since one of my other videos on this spot has gone through the roof. Every time I've been here since that video, and the video did quite well, the... Um, yeah, there's been multiple divers here and a few of them have said, hey, this is that spot that you went, that's why we came here. And I was like, oh, damn. But anyway, enough rambling. Time to get wet. Let's, Let's go. go. What are you finding in the water tent, Mon? Oh, uh, it's freezing on my face. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing here. All right, but... Oh, no. Oh, right. Shut up and dive. Let's go. We've just got to take the plunge. There's no point trying to like get in bit by bit, just jump in there. It, the water did take my breath away at first and instantly I had brain freeze just hit my head and it wasn't super comfy, but you know what? It's all a mental game and you can just not focus on it and focus on all the awesome stuff around. As you can see, I'm traveling pretty quick and this is basically just to keep my body a bit warmer, get straight into dives, go for an old favorite little honey hole. Now there are some crays in there, but they're tiny, which is a massive shame. So go check part two of this hole and there's no antennas sticking out so we'll just move on to a different spot because unfortunately there's no legal size craze there there's baby craze i decide to load up the gun and have a crack at spear fishing first up dive down into a good little ledge there's some nice bait around and there's some smaller trevally but none legal they're all probably 29 centimeters or under um, so not worth taking a shot on but really really cool to see this spot's actually pretty good for snapper as well um, but yeah no snapper here today I didn't just wanted to be down there and just yeah get amongst it. And here we have a blind shark. Now I am telling you these guys are fantastic indicator fish. 
There's lots of different species that cohabitat with other species and for the blind shark, if you see a blind shark, you are likely to be in Cray territory. So as soon as I saw him, I just started looking in the cracks and around. I quickly went up for another breath and I came back down onto the same crack and sure as anything, there are crays. Now, there's about 15 crays in here and there's probably only one that's legal. So I try and work out which he is and where he is and I find him and then that's it. I've just got to go for him. So I kind of move the other crays out of the way and go for the big boy and I get him. So he's not the world's biggest cray, but he is legal and that's what we want. So happy days. The other guys, unfortunately, would all be a bit small or too close to the legal size that I would want to warrant hassling the lobster for. So just leave them be. Every time we dive for lobster and we reach in and we grab them, we risk damaging them and that impacts their survivability. So if they look like they're right on the border or like under, just leave them alone. Um, and it's the same for the oversized craze now as well. When I see those guys, if they're oversized, I just leave them be. Um, if you bring them up, to the surface or just like hassle them for whatever reason yeah sure they're fun to rodeo but if you snap off a leg or an antenna you can do damage to the prey and the scent will travel through the water and make it more attractive to predators so just try and leave stuff alone and keep that natural balance in place sneaking up on Divermon as she comes up I can see a kid oh yeah where here we can see the cray in the cray bag that Mun's got and once they're in the bag they tend to chill out, they don't put up much of a fight, they kind of accept the fact that they're in a in a net and that's it, their deed is done. Mun reckons she sees another cray, I dive down and I think she's just seeing seaweed but I move on to a different area and stumble across this awesome, beautiful Port Jackson. Now he is a stunner, big fan of him, and he comes in close enough that he gets a kiss. He's just beautiful. These guys are honestly the friendliest little creatures in the ocean. I swear that they love being on camera because of whenever I've got my GoPro with me or the DJI, they come right up to me always. And if I don't have the camera, they take a little bit less interest, but either way, puppies of the sea. And straight after the PJ encounter, my body was a freezing it was time for me to get out oh. so the two are obviously still chattering <laughs> um, my jaws sore and I'm testing the uh, GoPro stabilization to the max I think I did about 45 Maybe 50 minutes. I'm not putting on the shakes. The, uh, there was a fair bit of wind that was whipping across my back the entire time. So it's like whipping the heat out of me. But all faith in Mom, and it's all up to Mom now to bring in dinner. Um, yeah, I got one cray. Um, there's loads and loads of undersized crays. Mon's got the gun. She's on the hunt. Will she get crays? Will she get fish? Who knows? All I know is I need to be a lizard or warm in the sun. Gotcha. We are suited and booted for another day. Just want to say a massive thank you to Sue and Chris Cater for lending me a wetsuit because of yesterday. Yeah was very 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 cold in just my little short shorts in like 15 degree water still managed to cray which was pretty good success but you know what we need more than just a cray for a family feed so we're off on another adventure and yeah today i'm going to a cray hole that i haven't dove in a couple of years but it's a very productive little hole so fingers crossed the water, viz, everything looks really, really good. Um, the winds are westerly and it is still blowing a fair bit. It's like 30K winds, but it's westerly. So we're protected on the east coast. Um, and we've got Diver Mon in front. She's carrying all of the gear 
She's a little pack horse. But you're not coming in today, are you, man? No. She's just going to be relaxing, relaxing, chilling <laughs> out. But so I'm only going to keep recording for a little while because then there'll be some obvious landmarks and being a bit of a gatekeeper these days. Um, because of it looks like a really really good spot there's a couple of guys already here and a few of you that are local to the area might actually recognize where i am from that little walkthrough but absolutely beautiful and i can see fish from here so let's have a little look out at those waves that is absolutely beautiful so as you can see the conditions are stunning quick pop of the drone and we can see that the visibility looks insane this dive is going to be beautiful let's just hope there's fish because sometimes when you've got incredible vis like this there's no fish and it's still hard spearfishing but fingers crossed on this dive i've managed to get into the water and swim about 20 meters and a school of salmon rush by so quickly load up the gun i'm on the 85 aim right roller my favorite which i personally call the poseidon's roller i dive down onto this rock and because of i'm so shallow i don't have enough weight to stay down there so i use my left hand and just jam it underneath the rock and that keeps me held there nice and tight i can just relax and just wait for salmon to come in close they're curious when they're in schools like this you just got to take your time don't make rushed movements be slow and pick one take the shot and knock its lights out the salmon will still hang around and yeah even though their buddy's gone they're, they're super curious fish they'll just come back so first things first with the salmon even though you stoned him we want to just put an icky in and then bleed them these fish can contain a lot of blood and the blood offsets the meat quite bad so we just bleed them as we do with any fish now that we've got one salmon in the bag let's go on the hunt for some craze i'm checking these cracks because of although you don't typically find craze in little ledges like this occasionally you will catch them when they're moving from a to b overnight or in the day and they do manage to find themselves in these little ledges so it's not a permanent hole for a cray but it can be a temporary transition transitional hole so still worth checking as well same as under here this section of reef i know incredibly well um i've spent a lot of time scouting the area we're talking yeah probably close to 100 hours within a 1k radius underwater here just basically learning the topography finding every nook cranny what holes craze at what time of year and yeah when certain swell directions pushes craze into a different area and stuff like that so pretty sure i'm gonna get a, a cray as i make my way to one of my favorite um little cray cracks and this continually produces year on year i only take from this crack probably once a year if that and that's just to ensure that i don't overfish it myself um, it's really really easy to overfish cray holes so yeah I try not to hit the same spot more than once a year it actually forces me to go out and look for more cray spots which is awesome because then I find new holes and I just find if I can keep the pressure off my own holes when I really really need to get something I can just go there and there's always crays so this crack obviously I find one cray and that's fantastic but then when I'm actually going in for the reach I see a second cray and I decide to go for the two in one which was really really cool grabbing two crays on one dive but then when you've got to put them into a catch bag and you're the only person in the water and your catch bags closed it's not the easiest task in the world so there's a couple of swapping hands and swapping grips where basically i'm holding on to the antlers and they've moved out of the way or i'm slipping on the antler um, unfortunately a couple of legs were lost in this process as you can see and it was a struggle um, i can remember thinking to myself like geez maybe i should have just stuck with one greed does hurt so this is um yeah this is what i get for going for the two in one it was cool at first but look at me struggle now um but eventually we get there i get it open the first cray goes in and just kicks himself back straight into the bag which is awesome for me and the second guy he was a bit more stubborn he, i think he kind of knew what was going on and didn't want to end up in that bag but eventually i get him into a spot where i can get his antennas passed 
the closing loop and as soon as they're past the closing loop I'm happy that I can just do that draw string up and he can just yeah make his way to the back of the bag with two crays in the bag and a salmon I'm not really looking after any more crays but one thing that I did want to do was just check this little hole um, a good little ledge system and there's usually estuary cobbler in it so I'm pretty keen on those guys and I didn't want to take them on this dive because I've already got the salmon I just wanted to see if he was there um, there's actually two cobbler in this hole and I haven't seen them for about a year and a half so I don't know if they're still there or not but they should be here we've got a big stingray rolling through and I continue to have a little look-see and all I'm going for now is slipper lobster. So there's two slipper lobster little holes that I know of in this area and they're just worth checking out because of, yeah, sometimes you find a slipper lobster and these guys you don't even need to go into a proper cave for them. They're really, really cool. I have another dive down and a different school of salmon comes over to check me out guys i yeah cannot recommend doing this enough but when you get into locations that are fishy even if you're not going to take a fish just dive down hold on the bottom and just learn how to behave with fish learn how to move your gun slowly so that you're not spooking fish and salmon and ludric are probably the easiest to train on but you'll learn what works, what noises work, what noises don't work, what movements scare the fish away. But when you take these learnings, you can apply them to all fish. So, top tip from the wet mammal there. And with that, decide to call it a day. <laughs> what is going on here then? <laughs> I come here. Oh, you got a young one, and they're all quite young actually. Couple of crows and a salmon. Oh nice! Where did all your friends go? Oh, Who are you making friends with? <laughs> making friends with all the magpies. Yeah, I like them. Magpie girl. Okay, so we just climbed up and managed to get those two crows and the salmon. And it's time to head home and we will cook up a bit of a feast. So not bad for two days diving. Not my best effort, but diving without a hood today. Diving in no wetsuit yesterday. And uh, yeah, mom made friends with some magpies, <laughs> which is gold. So um, yeah, time to get these crays into the esky on ice and ready for a cook up. Alright, in it goes. Time for an ice bath. How's that guy? Pretty good. Good size. Get him in. Alright, my Arnold Schwarzenegger, why don't you chill out? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to prep and grill a cray. I know a few of you have been keen to see this, so here it is.
You want to grill the crays from anywhere between 10 to 12 minutes, depending on the size of the cray. And yeah, just keep an eye, make sure you don't burn the tops. But this came out absolutely perfect. There's so much juice on it. The flavor and smell was incredible. And this is how we grill lobster. There we have it. This smells absolutely incredible. It looks super juicy. I cannot wait to get stuck in. So I'm just going to shut up. Unfortunately, Diver Mon is in Samoa of all places right now. But yeah, sorry, Mon, you're missing out. This looks insane. The variation of herbs and like mustard and stuff like that just go wild. Like, I like a bit of cheese on here. Like, yeah, a bit of lemon isn't too bad. Swap the parsley out for some coriander. There's so many different flavor combinations that you can do with these crays. But one thing I always do love to do is chuck a bit of cream cheese up near the head, get mixed in with the um, that orange stuff that most people avoid. But honestly, it's so good. Anyways, let's get stuck into it. It's just perfect. All right, I'm gonna get right in the camera here. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off it, but that's, ah. Oh. That is absolutely ridiculous. Why am I eating this alone? Mon, what are you doing? You're, you're missing out. This is incredible. Holy hell. I haven't had Eastern Cray like this probably since COVID. And you know what? We need more of this. Oh, so good. Dip in the head. Get all of that orange stuff on. It'll go nice and yellow. And yeah, with the cream cheese, it just adds like... Oh, Mmm, and you can try and tell me a better combination for a cray. I'm all ears. You're not gonna beat that. That is absolutely ridiculous I'm just gonna have one more little go with the fork before I go because of then I'm gonna get stuck into this like a pig I'm gonna use my hands. There's gonna be juices going everywhere. It's gonna be incredible. I cannot wait So here we go last bite There literally isn't anything better than that on the New South Wales coast. And I will say that 10 times over, that is ridiculous. Insane, the best thing. I'm glad that I braved the waters with no wetsuit. So massive, massive thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're gonna actually like try this recipe and honestly, just get experimental. Like the only reason I found out that cream cheese went well with this is because of, I was experimenting. And if you wanna go one up, go for the sweet chili cream cheese. That hits different, it is so good. Um, but that's it for this week, I hope you've enjoyed. Chuck a thumbs up, chuck a comment, drop a comment, let me know what your go-to bomb lobster recipe is. And if you've got nothing to add, then just drop a comment and boost that algorithm, I massively appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, subscribe to the channel, we're growing at a pretty steady rate at the moment, which is really, really cool, so I massively appreciate everybody. All the old people, the people that support the channel with membership, the people that support the channel with merch, you guys absolutely rock and you're my inspiration for, for keep creating content. So as long as you guys keep watching it and keep frothing it, I'll keep making it. So yeah, massive thank you guys. Until next time, stay wet, stay fed. Catch ya.